Today we're going to be comparing the iPhone 14 Pro Max versus a 35mm film camera. I have a similar lens on here to what the standard lens on the actual phone is. And I have a very um, questionable rig to make sure I get a pretty evenly lined up shot here. In fact, just to test it, I'm going to do one of these. And then I'm going to do one of those and see how that stacks up. We're gonna be shooting an entire roll of film and then we're gonna go back and look at the differences between the photos so you can actually see what the difference between an iPhone and a 35 millimeter film camera is. We're shooting on Kodak Gold 200, so that's gonna be our baseline for what we're working with here. All right, I like this kind of statue we've got set up here, so I'm gonna start with a first shot of that. I kinda of wanna get a bit of the trees in the foreground, so I'm gonna do that and then I'll come over here Get a similar photo there. All right. Now, if you watched my last video, V, who's currently behind the camera, really liked some of the red wall photos we did. So we're actually in a similar area. We're gonna go back there. We're gonna take a couple of those between the two cameras to see what that looks like. I think to change it up from our last video, down here could be cool under this tunnel. What we'll do is we'll get a bit more directional light because we'll get light coming in from either sides. So rather than being flat light like out here, we'll actually get a bit more of a dynamic light here, especially if she looks out to the one side. That no parking sign we might have to take out after the fact, but that's a problem for future me. That's like clone stamp or healing brush, just a quick little fix. Don't need to worry about that, all right. So I've changed up the settings on my film camera, dropped the shutter speed a little bit just to allow for that change in light. And we're gonna get V's to stand right against that wall. And I think we should get a pretty interesting look here. Chin up a bit. I'm thinking if I get you from like down below and get the everything above you. Let's see how that'll look. Widen your stance a bit. Dope. And then I'll get one the other way. Actually, I'll come in a little closer. Oh, that looks dope. Bring your eyes to me. Oh, oh. That's it for sure. That actually looks so good. And I look so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, this is kind of cool. I'm not like a huge architectural photography person, but when I do, I always like like corners of buildings and like that look up aspect. This abandoned building could be cool up here. I shot getting like the old kind of aesthetic there with then like the new buildings in the background. All right, this guy's not going fast enough. I'm just gonna go. Something like this, get the, you know, bit of the old and the new together. It's a really good thing I'm tall because I would not be able to shoot over the chain link fence otherwise. If I want to get like a vertical perspective, getting the chain link fence in the foreground, Nice. Hold on, don't move. I'm not moving. Your feet look right now like some kind of like indie ad of some kind. Just stand still. I'm standing still. See, this is the trick. Always keep your eyes open. This is the first and only time I'll take photos of your feet. I should get you to take a couple photos of me. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. To see the difference of like a, a user standpoint and just uh, get a different perspective, get some different photos in there. So, sh so show, show, show? I can't speak today. Show some variety. Oh yeah. What do you think using the different cameras? I like the film camera. I said it's hard because it's a tall setup, but I like the film camera because I don't have one. You want a photo here? Let's take a photo here. 
Look out a little bit to your right, not a lot, just a little. Yeah, that's the shot right there for sure. Hold that for me. That looks really good. Actually, can I get your head like here? Yeah, and then turn to me. So if you were to look where my elbow is, even though you can't see it, turn your chin a little more this way, a little bit more. On the film camera, I'm using like a 28 mil lens and I think it's just a little bit tighter than the actual iPhone lens, but it's the closest equivalent that I have and it matches pretty darn well in my opinion. I wanna get like a close up photo of your hand on your necklace. Ooh, hold on, let the hair come. Yeah. Oh, that was the perfect moment, hold on. You know what, that looks pretty good there with the sun peeking through the way it is. I think with that, we got a good variety of photos there. So I'm gonna pass this roll off to be developed. And then once we get it back, I'm gonna pull these photos into the edit. We'll play around with them a little bit, see what we can do with both. And then we'll actually compare the two and see the differences between film and the actual iPhone photos themselves. But I wanna see the overall vibe we get between the two. So let's jump over into the office to actually take a look at those. Okay, we've gotten the film back and now it's time to compare these with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Also, it's been a couple of days since we took these photos and it's a little late at night. I'm a little tired, but bear with me. Now to keep these pretty similar, I did a general edit across both of them just to give it a little more warmth, give it a little bit more of a look. This is just a simple Lightroom edit. I didn't go crazy here, just so that way I can see how the two of them handle a color grade and an overall tone adjustment. Now starting off with our first photo of V here behind the camera, we can see there's a bit of light leaks going on from the film version, but I kind of like it. You know, if we zoom in too, it makes it a little bit of a vibe. We can see kind of like I mentioned, the 28 mil is a little tighter than the iPhone lens, but honestly, I think it gives a similar enough perspective to really compare these two cameras. I've been about 50-50 going through a lot of these photos where some of them I absolutely love and some of them are just okay. And I feel like that's fine. Like a 50% like ratio is actually pretty good when you consider how many photos we usually take to get one keeper. And I didn't take extras here. I just took one photo on film and then maybe I'd take one or two on the iPhone, but it would just be one on film and then we'd move on. We wouldn't try to perfect the shot. It's like you're one and done. And there's obviously definitely more green tone in the film photos and it does create more of that overall vibe, which is why I really like using film. The phone, it, it does feel a little more snapshotty for all of them, but even so, the phone did a really good job here and you can edit it to be pretty similar. Like even here, you know, if you add a little bit of that green, you play with the exposure values, you can get it where it's looking pretty close, although they're not gonna be quite exact. Even here with kind of the wider lower shot, most of these I am liking the film version better. I find the iPhone ones are a little over sharpened and something that I'll usually do to fix that is bring the texture down because I find sharpness will make it weird, clarity will make it weird, but sharpness is kind of that nice sweet spot that will make it look a little nicer. This, I really, really like the film version of it. And I feel like a jewelry brand or something, you could get away with this through like some social posts or something, but the phone version, you wouldn't be able to get away with it for. That's my main point here is that like, the, the phone one, I don't like the photo. You know, it's, there, it's there's nothing fundamentally wrong with it, but it just feels a little off to me and the perspective, and maybe that's partially on me and maybe that's partially on the tool itself. But the film version, I'm really, really liking. You know, that focus right on the chain and the lips in the foreground out of focus just really pulls you in more than the phone does. It doesn't, the phone really doesn't pull you in at all. It's like, okay, it's a person's necklace or, you know, whatever. And the thing is not all of your photos are gonna be bangers, absolutely, you know, 
11 out of 10, post it on the gram, all that kind of stuff. A lot of them are gonna be misses, and there were a couple misses in this video, but I think the portraits turned out really well from both of these. And I think even some of the architectural photos I'm pretty happy with as well. But with all that said, I hope this was a fun experiment for you, seeing the difference between what an iPhone can do versus a film camera. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell to be notified for all future videos. Work hard, rest often, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.